Water is an important natural resource for all living beings. A prime source of fresh water on earth is rivers. It originates in the mountains and then flows downstream and enters the plains. Now, look at this video. Here we can see the state of water at the place where it originates and here we find that the water is pure and crystal clear at its place of origin. Now let's see what happens as the river flows further downstream. Well as the river flows further downstream and enters the plains it loses its purity and becomes filthy. This is because human beings discharge waste, garbage, plastics, etc. into these water bodies. Now, let me tell you an interesting fact in this context. Most of the rivers in India is considered as sacred and worshipped as God. But despite this fact, River Yamuna, which flows in the northwestern part of the country, is one of the most polluted rivers, not just in India, but in the world. As a matter of fact, Delhi and adjoining states discard 58% of their waste into this river. And this is degrading the quality of this water body and polluting it. Thus, by comparing the previous two videos, we can infer that the water is usually very pure and clean when it originates. But as it comes into human contact, it becomes dirty and unclean. Now, this act wherein the water bodies get contaminated due to release of toxic substances into it is known as water pollution. And water pollution is an evil act because this is losing the valuable or use of a natural resource like water. Here in this picture we can see that a lot of waste is dumped into water bodies and because of which this is of no use to us. Now let us find out the sources or main causes of water pollution. Well, a major source of water pollution is domestic sewage and municipal waste. Whether you have realized or not, but we generate a lot of waste in our everyday lives like leftover food, torn clothes, old books, plastics, glass bottles, soaps, detergents and even waste produced in human body. Now, these waste that are discharged from Homes, schools, institutions, public places, etc. are known as municipal waste or domestic waste. Now, these wastes are eventually carried into rivers, streams, canals, etc. via sewer pipes or drains as we can see in this video. And these eventually leads to water pollution. So, we find how household activities causes water pollution. Another major source of water pollution is industries. Well, we know that industries use a lot of chemicals in their daily processes. Now, these toxic chemicals and untreated waste water is eventually discharged into water bodies like rivers, streams, lakes, etc. Now, discharge of these toxic chemicals alters the chemical composition and physical properties of water thereby leading water pollution in recent times farmers have upgraded themselves to advanced farming techniques or agricultural practices like use of chemical fertilizers pesticides etc now although these advanced farming techniques boost crop production but it has detrimental impact on environment use of fertilizers and pesticides gets into the soil when we spray them over the crops. Now, during heavy rainfall, these chemicals are eventually carried to water bodies. And this is how agricultural practices causes water pollution. Thus, we discussed that the major sources of water pollution are 
the waste that are produced at household that is domestic sewage industrial effluents and agricultural malpractices now water pollution is a matter of serious concern why so well this is because although 71% of the earth's surface is covered with water which is a renewable resource but only small portion of it is fit for human use this is because 97% of the total water available on the earth is in saline form that is it is present in seas or oceans Two percent of the remaining is locked up in ice caps and glaciers, and the remaining just one percent is available as fresh water in rivers, lakes, streams, etc. So, out of hundred, just one percent is available for human use. so according to these statistics there is serious shortage of fresh water on earth and we human beings are worsening the situation by polluting this scarce resource so we must stop water contamination and look for ways in which we can conserve this precious resource so let's see how we can conserve water now before proceeding with our lesson we have an objective that needs to be solved it says dash of the total water available on earth is fresh water and the options given are 0% 1% 99% or 100% well which of these options do you think is the correct one well we just discussed that out of 100 just 1% is available as fresh water on earth so the correct option will be 1% well the first and foremost step towards conservation of water should be that we must stop water pollution now we discuss that there are different sources of water pollution like household waste industrial effluents and agricultural practices so our aim must be to control these activities the untreated waste water coming from household and industries must not be discharged into water bodies directly rather they should be treated in a plant wherein the harmful toxic chemicals should be removed from the water bodies and then discharged into rivers lakes etc in this way we would be able to prevent water pollution to some extent we also discuss that advanced farming techniques like use of chemical fertilizers pesticides etc causes water pollution so therefore instead of using these toxic chemicals farmers should rather use organic or natural manure now we can easily prepare this at home from leftover vegetable pills spoiled food etc The advantage of natural manure is that it is biodegradable and does not cause pollution unlike chemical fertilizers. So natural manure is biodegradable and environment friendly. Well prevention of water pollution is not enough. Rather we must also look for ways in which we can conserve or save this precious resource. So now let us discuss the ways of water conservation. We all know that rain is the natural supplier of fresh water on earth. Now you must have noticed that during heavy rainfall the roads get flooded and the excess water flows into drain manholes etc thereby joining oceans and seas. So a lot of water is wasted in this way. Now what if if we conserve this fresh and pure rain water instead of just allowing it to flow away? 
well the excess water flowing down the rooftop can be collected in a tank after filtering and stored for future use this process of collecting rainwater and storing it for future use is known as rainwater harvesting now rainwater harvesting is not a new concept rather it has been in use since prehistoric times look at this picture it is a step well now these step wells were built in ancient times by rulers in order to store rain water now a step well is usually a large tank wherein steps or stairs are constructed along the walls of the tank and this is done so that people can fetch water even from the bottom of the tank where the water level falls down drastically so people just go down the stairs and collect rain water and these steps were built to store rain water for future use thus construction of step wells is a primitive way of storing or conserving rain water another way of conserving water resources is to refill the ground water table this can be done by planting trees on bare ground well we know that plants bind the soil together and prevent surface runoff and also the water thus collected seeps through the soil and used to refill the ground water table thus plants reduce surface runoff and replenish ground water so plants are our friends and they help us in many ways to protect the environment well we know that a lot of water is used to irrigate crop fields so our aim must be to minimize wastage of water during agricultural practices well generally to irrigate crop fields large canals are constructed and a main disadvantage of canal irrigation is that a lot of water is wasted through evaporation or seepage or percolation so in order to prevent this the canals should be cemented and covered up in order to minimize loss of water through evaporation or percolation a better way of irrigating crop fields is use of sprinklers in case of sprinklers the water comes out through small holes as little rain drops therefore wastage of water through evaporation or seepage is prevented in this way so in order to conserve water at fields we must line the canals and also we must switch to sprinkler irrigation so these are some of the smart techniques of irrigating croplands and also conserving water resources in fact as an individual also we can take little efforts to conserve this precious resource firstly we must fix all leaking taps faucets or pipes secondly we must close the tap when not in use especially while brushing teeth or applying soap to our body the water used to wash vegetables can be used for gardening again we must run dishwasher washing machine only when they are fully loaded because a lot of water is used to run these machines so these are some of the ways in which we can conserve water at homes so we discussed about numerous ways in which we can conserve and preserve this precious resource such as water now conservation of water should be our utmost priority because water is a valuable and basic thing that is needed for our survival and we cannot live without water for more than 3 days so water is very much needed for existence of all living beings on earth in fact a one drop of water is equivalent to a one drop of life so therefore we must conserve this precious resource in order to live a better tomorrow 
So this brings us to the end of today's discussion on pollution and conservation of water resources. Initially, we started our discussion by understanding the definition of water pollution and then we discussed about various ways that cause water pollution. For example, domestic sewage, industrial effluents and agricultural malpractices. Further, we also discuss about various ways in which we can conserve precious resources such as water. So that's all about today's lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5,000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now